was a little girl, a seed was planted inside of me. A seed that has told me to hunt and fish, but acknowledge my impact, to take part in conserving. Now I had no idea what that term meant until I was 12 and took a hunter safety course and heard the term conservation. Now by definition, conservation means the preservation and protection of something. But what does it really mean? Well, it's a way of life that has helped that seed inside of me sprout. It's taught me to constantly preach about protecting our animals and to protect our planet. So whenever I heard that the Wonders of Wildlife Museum was going to open, a museum that I have been seeing built my entire life, I knew I had to go see it. I had to talk to the important people, the creators, people like Johnny Morris, the founder of Bass Pro and the Wildlife Museum itself, to see if this museum was promoting conservation. I love, I've always loved to fish. The Wonders of Wildlife National Museum and Aquarium is 350,000 square feet in total. Citizens have really created something unique here in the state of Missouri. 25 years later, here we are. So the crew that was working over there would walk over here and have lunch. This is more than a building with a bunch of dead animals. This is a, this is a museum, it's, it's a natural history museum. That the clout uh, that, that was in the, in the tent that night. I, uh, I, I, I value, Johnny, promoting the idea of being a good steward of God's creation. I hope everyone here with your wife or husband will still be enjoying hunting and fishing like I do when you're as old as I am. Thank you very much. It is a huge attraction, uh, not just for Springfield, but for the entire Southwest uh, corner of Missouri. Wonders of Wildlife is a story in itself, but it would mean nothing without the seed that it started from. One man with one passion. Bass Pro started as a bait and tackle shop and has grown into a global powerhouse not only promoting conservation, but outdoorsmanship everywhere. I fished in a, the first national bass term on Tabor Rock Lake in 1970, and I met a lot of fishermen that were making lures in their, you know, at home. A lot of them were upstart, just, uh, very small companies like a fellow named Tom Mann that invented the jelly worm and others. And then, uh, but I, I and where, where we're standing now, this used to be a Gibson's discount store, and I was a good customer, and I kept bringing in my, well, approximately where we are here or where our main store is and I had a list of all these lures that I'd come across at the tournament but I couldn't get permission from the home office you know to or the, the store manager couldn't so then I talked my dad into put some uh, lures in the in our his brown derby liquor store down the street so that's really how we got started. In talking with Mr. Morris I was curious of how I could be as successful as him and take a little bait and tackle shop and turn it into a global powerhouse. There's no substitute for hard work. I also think there's no substitute for passion. You know, to, if you can find something that you enjoy, I don't care what it is, I think there's a gratification that comes to from giving things your best effort. If you win, if you hit a home run, or if you come up short, uh, and I've you know, had roller coasters uh, on different endeavors in my life, but I think at the end of the day, it's like what you feel good about is when you put forth your best effort and just give it everything you have. Even when you get tired at night, you go to bed, you're tired, but you're happy because you know you just, you're into it and giving it everything you have. Mr. Morris has not been the only one affected by the creation of his little bait and tackle shop. In fact, the Missouri Department of Conservation has benefited greatly. Uh, Johnny has a lot of respect for the Missouri Department of Conservation, the history of the, of the department and how citizens have really created something unique here in the state of Missouri. As you go through today and you, you go through any Bass Pro Shop here in the United States, uh, you'll also, often see the conservation message. And, and that's especially true in, here in Missouri when you look at any of the Bass Pro Shops. 
and you see the history of the Missouri Department of Conservation, the creation of the 1-8% sales tax, and the formation of the Conservation Commission in 1936 that really took politics out of conservation here in Missouri. The evolution and the history of the Missouri Department of Conservation and conservation across the world sparked a need to create a museum to commemorate it. The Wonders of Wildlife National Museum and Aquarium is 350,000 square feet in total, making it larger than even the Smithsonian Museum uh, in D.C. We've got 35,000 live animals covering more than 800 species. That's fish, mammals, reptiles, and birds. We've got more than 80 aquariums and nearly 50 galleries. On Media Tour Day, I got my crew together. Seth for cinematography, Elizabeth for audio, and me for reporting and directing. Fortunately, we had the opportunity to talk to many important people. And whenever I ask them the question of what does Wonders of Wildlife mean to them, it seems as if I got their most meaningful answers. Me, Wonders of Wildlife means that Springfield now has a place where we can teach kids about the importance of connecting with the outdoors. We really believe that when people make a connection with the outdoors and are able to be inspired by the beauty and the power of nature, that they that will breed a desire within them to want to sustain and conserve the outdoors for future generations. So more than anything, we hope that kids, families, everyone can walk through this place, make a connection with nature, and become inspired to want to get involved in the conservation movement. Man, what an amazing place. But let's get real. That meaning has fluctuated over the years. Springfield has watched Wonders of Wildlife grow and fall. And Eric Olson of the Springfield Business Journal has been covering that rise and fall. Back um, in, the, in the early 2000s, uh, Wonders of Wildlife was, I remember it being very targeted to uh, local wildlife and trying to preserve the local heritage and um, you know, that, that was, had its pros and cons. So I, I heard um, people speak kind of critically about it in that, well, if I wanted to just see what is in our backyard, I just go out to the backyard. I don't need to go to a museum to experience that. And, um, but that's, you know, that's just part of conservation. And, and yeah, you can say that. You can go on your own excursions around the Ozarks and, and see what maybe was captured inside the museum see it for yourself in real real time, but um, the educational supporting pieces about you know, why that nature is the way it is and what types of uh, trees or, or wildlife are known to, to be in this region versus that region. Um, the, I remember the museum being, being very strong on the education side and always brought in school classrooms and, and doing field trips and such. And um, of course that's going to continue to be uh, a big part of, of what's to offer um, there now, but it's it's much more diverse and robust, and um, you know the, the things that we have to travel travel hundreds and thousands of miles to see. Yeah. Now we're going to be able to see that under under one roof. Some have been less forgiving. It's taken time to find its place. And why has it taken so long to? I think it ought to be self-explanatory when you walk around here. You can see that this is more than just a display of some artifacts. The creative part of telling this historic story, gathering these artifacts from literally around the world, bringing in the fishes from around the world, 850 species, over 35,000 fish. When you look at the building itself, to think about the life support systems that it takes for all these different fish, for example, in the aquarium. You think about salinity, water temperature, all the kinds of habitat that are important so that those fish can live. Every aspect of the museum was worked on by one of the hundreds of workers who were employed by this project. Wonders of Wildlife has not only brought us beauty in all of its forms, but it's also brought business you know it, it was a, it's a game changer for some of those companies because if you think about it if you take this project off of their work orders for 2017 
their, their employees, their financial position, it's going to look a lot differently. That's a, that's a huge job for a company and they're glad to take it because that's good work. It was, it was a lot of work, um, but it kept them afloat. And at a time really when the construction industry is, is not booming, um, jobs are, are harder to come by and work, making it more challenging is skilled labor is, is a shortage right now. And so uh, to be able to, to have something that you know is on the books and, and consistent steady work for a six month or an eight month period like this museum, it, was, uh, it meant the life uh, to a lot of companies. Not only has Wonders of Wildlife been the life or death of some construction companies, but it's also been the life or death of tourism in our town. Tracy Kimberlin, CEO of the Convention and Visitors Bureau, has already noticed an influx in tourism, and the museum opened less than a month ago. It already has and, and, uh, and will continue to bring tourism. It is a world-class facility. There is no question about it. The attention to detail is over the top. I've never seen anything like it in any other facility. And when you take uh, Wonders of Wildlife in its current form and add to what already exists at Bass Pro, uh, there is a complex here in Springfield, a community of uh, you know 160,000 people in the city limits that does not exist in any city anywhere in the world and we should be awfully proud of that. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a major attraction that no one else can claim. Uh, it's, it's ours, and, and that's the way Johnny Morris wants to keep it. Just as Tracy mentioned, Johnny Morris knew there was no other place than here in Springfield, Missouri. There's no better place. It's right in the center of America, and it's our home, and it's a cool place. So. And we have a lot of people coming to the store already that have interest in these things, so there's no other place. Mr. Morris is exactly right. There is no other place that has the history of Springfield. There is no other place that has witnessed the growth of Wonders of Wildlife and of Bass Pro. And there is no other place that I've grown up to be a conservationist in. After doing this story, I have found out that this museum does more than promote conservation. It creates conservation. It creates business. And yes, it can even create controversy. For Chief TV, I'm Desiree Nixon.